What's up guys, Sean here, and today we're going to talk about North Korea. Okay, so the reason I'm making this video is pretty obvious. There was a North Korea summit. The president of the United States, Donald Trump, met with the president of North Korea. I'm pretty sure this is the first time that a United States president has ever met with a member of the Kim family when they were serving as the dictator of North Korea. And while this meeting is historic, one of the things that I've noticed is that there's a lot of misinformation about it. And there's misinformation coming from Donald Trump and there's misinformation coming from the media. So what I wanna do with this video is talk about the things that actually happened in North Korea, some of the things that led up to this meeting, and what the results were of this meeting. Because honestly, I found trustworthy information about this whole North Korea situation very difficult to find. On one side, you have the mainstream media. They basically have already decided that this is a huge failure. Kim Jong-un has gotten one over on the president. The president's now praising the dictator of North Korea. That's an awful thing but they're really not trustworthy in this regard. Remember, this is the same mainstream media that was promoting Kim Jong-un's sister during the Olympics. This is the same exact mainstream media that was making fun of Otto Wampier, the American college student who was beaten into a coma and then returned to America when they realized that he was gonna die. I mean, you actually had mainstream media outlets running with articles saying Otto Wampier should have realized that his white privilege didn't work in North Korea. So the media is completely untrustworthy because when President Trump was ratcheting up the rhetoric against North Korea, they backed the dictator of North Korea. They backed Kim Jong-un. They were saying that Trump was the crazy radical one and Kim Jong-un was the reasonable one, even though he is one of the worst dictators on planet Earth. But now all of a sudden that Trump is talking to Kim Jong-un and he has some nice things to say about him, the media has suddenly remembered that Kim Jong-un is a horrible human rights violator and that North Korea is the worst country on planet Earth. So the media is ridiculous. Obviously, they're just trying to attack the president and you can't trust where they stand on any of these issues. However, on the other side, you have Trump and his sycophants and they're already claiming victory. Awesome. The way you have described things, it sounds like you feel that he's on the road to denuclearize. Oh, absolutely. So it's what? in the agreement. It says he will denuclearize. Right, I you know, know it's, it's funny when that's you see, broad. When it's funny when you see the fake news because... And you guys aren't fake, but I signed an agreement where we get everything, everything. I was with Prime Minister Abe, another good friend of mine from Japan. I said, when's the last time you had a rocket flying over Japan? He said, it has not happened. I said, it right. won't happen. Don't worry about it. They're like, North Korea promised to denuclearize. Trump got them to promise to denuclearize. Problem solved. The world's much safer. North Korea, don't even worry about it anymore. Japan, did, did you have any missiles shot over you in the last six or seven months? No? Solve the problem. Give Trump the Nobel Peace Prize, greatest president ever, best foreign policy achievement of all time. North Korea already agreed to denuclearize. What do we need to talk about? Do we even need to go into the details? Do we even need to talk about anything? No, Kim Jong-un, great guy. And that position is also completely ridiculous because the North Koreans, as I'll explain to you in a minute, haven't really agreed to do anything. And if it's the position of the president that these talks in and of themselves are an achievement, and it's not a first step to a long process that hopefully will have a good result, we're not gonna have good results. All of the president's detractors that say that the North Koreans will have got one over on him will have been right. Because the fact is, whether you wanna hear it or not, the North Koreans have done things like this before. Their strategy is to ratchet up the rhetoric, ratchet up the warmongering in the hopes that they'll get concessions from the West. So we give them a relief, they back down for a little bit, and then they start the whole process all over again. In reality, we have no idea what brought the North Koreans to the table. We hope that it was Trump's escalation in rhetoric, that he was so far outside of normal protocols for US presidents that the North Koreans got scared and now they're actually backing down and they'll give us something real. But there are two other possibilities that are just as likely. The current leader of South Korea is from a party that's way less hawkish than usual. So it's possible that Kim Jong-un sees that there's a weaker, less aggressive government in South Korea that wants US soldiers out of the Korean Peninsula and he thinks he can take advantage and get one over on Trump who also wants troops out of the Korean Peninsula. Ask me a question like that. I would love to get the military out as soon as we can because it costs a lot of money a lot of money for us. We don't get paid fully for that military, which, you know, I'll be talking to South Korea about. But uh, we have 32,000 soldiers in South Korea. I'd like to get them home. I would like to. And he's actually using the promise of nuclear disarmament as a way to get something that the dictatorship in North Korea has wanted for three generations. And the final possibility is that the North Korean regime blew up their nuclear testing mountain. It's imploding right now. 
and their program is basically done because they blew up their mountain. So the only reason they're offering nuclear disarmament is because they literally can't run their nuclear program and they're just trying to get something in exchange for the mess that they created. The fact is at this stage of the negotiations, we have no clue what their motivation is. But when you take into consideration their past history of being terrible, horrible liars, that always make promises and then backpedal and start threatening and being more aggressive, we should probably err on the side of caution and not say we're going to take our troops out of South Korea. Now there's a lot of unnecessary United States military bases around the world, but that base in South Korea is not one of the unnecessary ones. Having those US soldiers there lets the North Koreans know that any aggression against South Korea will be provoking a war with the United States government, a war that they cannot win, and the US presence on the peninsula has allowed South Korea to flourish for decades. Now they did sign an agreement, we're going to go over the four major points of the that agreement and I'm going to explain to you why that's really nothing. Number one, the United States and the DPRK commit to establish new US DPRK relations in accordance with the desire of the peoples of the two countries for peace and prosperity. So point one really doesn't mean anything, it just says the United States and North Korea will work toward better diplomatic relations in the future. Point two, the United States and the DPRK will join their efforts to build a lasting and stable peace regime on the Korean Peninsula. Again, this really means nothing and it's hardly distinguishable from point one. Number three, reaffirming the April 27, 2018 declaration, the DPRK commits to working towards complete nuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. So right there you actually have the makings of something. The North Koreans say that they're going to work towards denuclearization of the peninsula, but considering there's no timetable, details about verification, or any teeth to this, it doesn't mean much right now. Number four, the United States and the DPRK commit to recovering POW slash MIA remains, including the immediate repatriation of those already identified. Now look, this one's a good thing. There are a lot of US soldiers that died on the Korean peninsula and unfortunately they died on the north side of the peninsula. So the remains to this day have not been recovered and sent home and buried properly for their families. Now I'll be glad to see the remains of US soldiers finally come home and be buried properly by their families. However, this is not the first time the US and the North Koreans have had an agreement like this. And the way it turned out last time was eventually the North Koreans were trying to extort money out of the United States. You guys can look up the cash for bones scandal. Now I hate to say it, but unfortunately that's the fourth and final plank in the agreement that Trump and Kim Jong-un signed. Look, I'm glad these talks are happening. I'm not one of these people who's like, we have to go to war with North Korea, it's the only solution. But I'm not gonna pretend that the talks in and of themselves are the victory when we've actually received nothing in exchange. Hopefully something good will come of these talks in the future, but right now we have nothing to grasp on. So all these people who are claiming that Trump has already created peace on the peninsula, and that includes the president himself, that's just not true. The North Koreans have not given us anything, but fortunately, although the United States did temporarily suspend joint military exercises with South Korea, we really haven't given them anything either. Uh, we are gonna get out of the, the war games that cost so much money, you know, where we, because I think number one, it's very provocative and I wanna do it and I think they're very happy about it because it is so provocative, but tensions are gonna remain on until such time as we see, you know, this is going to happen. And we pretty much see that now, but the sanctions will remain on until we really start dismantling or dismantle the nuclear weapons. Because so what I'm saying right now is that we don't really know what it is. It's not the end of the world for sure, but it's also not a true peace agreement. And while most of the media's criticism of President Trump even having these talks are the product of Trump derangement syndrome because they would be praising the crap out of Obama for doing the same, the one criticism of President Trump that actually is 100% valid is the dude needs to stop praising Kim Jong-un. He's people a tough and... guy. Hey, when you take over a country, tough country, with tough people, and you take it over from your father, I don't care who you are, what you are, how much of an advantage you have. If you can do that at 27 years old, you, I mean, that's one in 10,000 that could do that. No, it's not an achievement for him to take over North Korea at 27. He inherited the dictatorship from his family. He didn't earn it. He loves his people, not that I'm surprised by that, but he loves his people and- No, President Trump, he does not love the North Korean people. If he loved the North Korean people, they wouldn't be hostages, slaves, 
or in concentration camps. Really, he's got a great personality. He's a, you know, funny guy. He's a very smart guy. He's a great negotiator. And no, he's not a good guy. Anyway, that's all I really have for you guys today. I hope this clarifies some of the stuff you've been hearing about North Korea over the past couple of weeks. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Like, share, subscribe, follow me on the social medias. You guys know the drill. Till next time.